I am woman. When you treat a disease, first treat the mind. Chen Jen. In 1997, I learned what it meant to be a woman. Not how other people define womanhood, mind you. I was well past puberty, had already been married, and experienced childbirth twice. I learned how to define myself in other ways, as I faced the loss of what I thought made me female. Six months after the birth of my daughter, I went for my annual exam. I'd been exercising and feeling great and had no worries. The doctor completed her exams and I returned home. A week later, the doctor called and told me that she needed to perform a cervical biopsy based on my test results. Scared and a bit squeamish, I appeared dutifully for the colposcopy. A week later, I was told that the cells were not cancerous and that lowering my stress would likely improve my cervical health. I was informed that I would be returning to her office twice per year to have exams, instead of annually due to the increased risk. Two months later, I met with the doctor again, this time because I was pregnant with my second child. Despite a few hiccups with the pregnancy, things went relatively well, and I gave birth to a healthy son eight months later. Six weeks after the birth, I headed to the doctor's office for a postpartum exam. While I thought that all was well, the doctor was concerned about some suspicious skin discoloration near the suture sites. While it seemed reasonable to me that the area might be freaking out given what I'd been through, the doctor was not so pleased. I was told that I would be returning to her office for a biopsy the following week. After the last biopsy, I wasn't looking forward to any other procedure being performed in the area, but agreed to do so anyway. A long week later, the doctor did a punch biopsy. I left the office sore and began the long wait for the results. A few days later, we learned that there was no cancerous explanation for the radical change in coloration. It was, as I'd suspected, just a part of my reaction to childbirth. I felt like I had a new lease on life. Two close calls, but all clear now. I enjoyed my children, my family, and my work, and settled into the working mother routine. I tried to focus on what was positive and to distract myself from the stressors that seemed to be creeping in day by day. I made marketing calls, attended networking events, and when my son was six months old, I entered training as a medical intuitive. I was going to be all that I could be, no matter what else was happening in my life. As much as I loved the training and felt like I'd finally discovered myself, I watched the distance grow daily in my marriage. I had entered a new world filled with light and healers, a place where he didn't fit. He traveled more often, and the silence between us grew. When we interacted, it was about the house or the children, but little else. I distracted myself from the reality I lived in until one morning I found a lump in my left breast. I contacted my doctor, who gave the lump a cursory exam and ushered me into radiology, the tech performed an ultrasound, and I watched as the amorphous beast appeared on the screen. While I was used to the tiny fibrosis I'd had all my life, this mass was much larger than anything I'd ever felt, and its presence on the screen shocked me. Appearing a little pale, the technician left the room and returned with the radiologist, something I'd never experienced despite the fact that I'd had numerous ultrasounds during my pregnancies. The radiologist turned to face the screen and grimaced. She then turned her gaze to me and told me that the mass had to be biopsied and likely removed, and that I would need to meet with a breast surgeon immediately. She left the office and returned with a sheet of paper as I pulled my clothing back into place. I was to head over to the surgeon's office while she called to schedule an emergency appointment. I drove across town, finding it difficult to breathe. A half hour later, I was sitting in yet another doctor's exam room, being told that no biopsy would be performed due to the inherent risk of a potentially cancer-filled mass leaking its mutant cells into my chest cavity. And, as the surgeon scheduled a radical lumpectomy for my left breast, the tears came like a torrent. I was 31 years old, and in the previous 24 months, I'd had two children— and had faced cancer scares in all of the organs that I thought made me inherently female. Somewhere, here, there, was a message for me. I spent the weekend not with my husband, or even my children, but with a group of healers of all kinds. I had my palm read, got a massage, had some acupuncture, 
then spent hours in past life regression. In all of the lives in which I died as a result of bodily injury or illness, the healers diligently worked to resolve and release the energy trapped there. Then, on Sunday, anxious but more at peace, my tribe and I went to see G.I. Jane. After two hours, I came out physically and emotionally exhausted. Over dinner, I told my women friends that if Demi Moore could shave her head and be a badass, then I could certainly surrender my breasts in order to survive. Monday morning found me on a gurney, staring up at the man who was about to remove most of my left breast. We made an agreement that if the path slide were positive for cancer, he'd remove both of my breasts and schedule reconstruction as soon as possible. I slipped into the nothingness of anesthesia, chanting my prayers, as I was wheeled into the operating room. I awoke to the most incredible blue eyes staring at me, smiling. Ah, good, you're awake, greeted the doctor. I still felt so fuzzy, but wanted to know what they had found. I tried to reach up to my chest, but I couldn't seem to move my arms. That'll wear off soon, the surgeon soothed. But you don't need to check. They're both still there, he said, smiling again. Then, as my tears of joy consumed me, he reached out to touch my arm. He leaned in close to me, with his lips just to my ear, and whispered, I don't know what you did, but I've never seen cancer vanish. You think someday you can teach me that trick? He stood up, gave me a wink, and strode away. My whole life, I thought that being a woman was about having a uterus, a vagina, breasts, and long hair. But, in 1997, I learned that being a woman was about acknowledging the awesome light within, filling every crevice with peace, joy, and love, and knowing that no body part would ever again define me. Sage de Bexadon Breslin, Ph.D.